That does not sound good. Hello. Hello. What? Hello. Wait, it hasn't come up on here yet. I'm waiting. Hey, guys. Uh, sorry, we obviously are in like a different setup. I don't know if you guys can hear us, but um, it's still saying it's waiting for us to go live. So I don't know if we're on a delay. Let us know in the chat if you can hear us, if you can see us yet. I mean, it says we're live. So I'm going to go ahead and assume we are. <laughs> are we live? <laughs> Um, also, we're working off of, uh, okay. there we go. Okay. So hopefully the picture's okay and the sound is okay. We're using my little Chromebook because we were having troubles getting uh, Vicky's computer connected. But hello, everybody. We're here in Colorado. And, and we've got Vicky, a.k.a. Victoria, which must be taken seriously, a.k.a. my fiance for not even two months now, um, two more months. And then we have Liz O'Kane from Colorado. What's happened? Just got visitors in town, having a little bit of fun. <laughs> mm, hello, hello. You can say something. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little tired. Mm -hmm. So we went right from the remix. We were home for two days pretty much after everyone left because we had a lot of people that stayed through the weekend and friends stayed through the weekend that we hung out with. And then we had Monday and Tuesday that we kind of got all of our shipping done that we hadn't done in 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then did some laundry. And then we left at 5 a.m. on Wednesday, and we've been here, and now it's Sunday. So we've been going nonstop. If you guys have been following um, I, my social media, like I've had, I put a little bit of stuff up on Instagram. Uh, you put some stuff up on Instagram. Yeah. So you might, and on Facebook, so you might have seen a little bit of what, what's been going on here. But let me ask you, Vicki, how do you feel about thrifting in Colorado? Uh, I'm already looking at property. I think we should move. <laughs> Forget Las Vegas. Oh. The re new re remix is going to be in Colorado Springs. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But not. I will say this has, I mean, we travel a lot for sourcing. So people that watch us or that know us know that we do a lot of like road trips and source, you know, we'll do like three or four days in California, all different parts and mm -hmm. three or four days in Arizona. And we've done all this multiple times in different locations. And every time we travel, we source, even if it's just a little bit, this was specifically, we knew this was going to be a big sourcing trip. So it was sourcing and getting to hang out with our good friend. But then we got here. This is the best sourcing I have ever experienced anywhere. Well, let me tell you, like what maybe it wasn't last summer. I, was, I think it was the summer before that our friend Barry um, Afro Vintage, he he lives in Las Vegas and he went to came to Colorado for like the whole summer. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go there. I'm going to do some um, I'm going to do some sourcing there. And he was like if you followed him on Instagram, insane hauls, I swear, daily. And I'm like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. And and let me tell you guys, now it all makes sense. It's like mm -hmm. ridiculous. And you don't yeah. even, you're not like a big thrifter. Right. Yeah. So. Liz is mostly retail arbitrage. Which is also so, really good Which here. is yeah. also excellent. Like, I'm half seriously. and half. Mm -hmm. She doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't divulge some of her sources because retail arbitrage is like a whole different thing. Um, and so mm -hmm. people tend to have to protect their sources when they have like a really, really good little honey hole. And so we, we're just going to talk about the thrifting and stuff, but it's just been, crazy. it's been so good. So the very first day, within the first day and a half, we flew into Denver Wednesday morning and Liz picked us up at the airport mm -hmm. and we hung out and we had a, a hotel room it was kind of like a mini suite type of thing. Cause I had mm -hmm. like a little kitchenette and living room area. And we were like, good. Cause we need to spread out all of our crap. Right. <laughs> so the three of us stayed there for two nights. And then we've been here in Colorado Springs where Liz lives since Friday. But I'm going to tell you, we we had to have Kristen, Rural Squirrel, for those of you that uh, met her or may follow her channel. She's a she's, a she's awesome. She's I a lover. She has such great energy. So she met us at the bins Friday morning and Thursday night. I said, um, can you meet us at the hotel? Because we have so much stuff that we can't pack the car to get to Liz's house in Colorado Springs. So we had to pack up three huge boxes and Kristen was kind enough to take them for us and drop them at UPS. Mm -hmm. We still had like, um, we still had Friday to source in Denver and we weren't going to have, we could have put everything into the car barely, barely and made it back here to Colorado Springs, but we still had a full day of bins and a bunch of other stuff that we were going to be doing. And we we're like, we won't be able to get anything else if we don't ship some of this stuff mm -hmm. off. It was, it was just crazy. But here's the thing. 
So first of all, you know, we have bins in um, Vegas. And for those of you guys who have gone to different bins, it's kind of depends on what area you are in, how good it's going to be. Vegas, since they got the new location, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. good. It's where I source most of my stuff lately. The bins yeah. in Denver are crazy. And so Denver has three, right? Three. And yeah. then... Yeah, there's other other places too, right? So what? How many bins total are there? Like, so the I know that there's the three in Denver, and then one down here in Colorado Springs. Yeah, so at least. And four. you know how many we went to? One, one, one. <laughs> two days in a row. Two yeah. days in a row. But it was so good at, that we at, we just started running out of time. I mean, there, so here's the thing: we are definitely coming back for a sourcing yeah. trip. This makes way a lot of sense for us to fly out. You saw Southwest points. Uh, rent a car, source for a couple of days, ship most of it home, whatever we can't yeah. fit, take home. We're lucky that we live in Vegas because it's a short flight and shipping costs are pretty low because we're just, it's just the next. It's the same, same. zone. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, so we shipped up just under a hundred pounds home already. Uh, and it costs like 62 bucks. Yeah. We went to the Kearney location. Um, also, so just to give you a bigger picture. So there's all the, all the bins, which are great. Mm -hmm. um but there's also a huge like for for my kind of stuff like vintage t-shirts and stuff like that there's a huge community here and there are a ton of vintage shops so i actually have i'll show you guys this little map because i was asking some people that i know like hey where should we go where are some cool places to check out and they told us a couple locations on broadway in denver which is a street there and then i was in one of the shops there and i'm like hey what else do you recommend and the girl like pulls out this map and it's literally, this is like a bunch of the vintage shops. I can't see, but a bunch, bunch of the vintage shops just in this one area. Now these are going to be like priced up a little bit more. I'm <clears throat> sorry. Priced up a little bit more, but um, there's also multiple like uh, collectives. Um, like a co-op. Co-ops. So we went to like, I don't know, probably like four or five of those where there's a whole bunch of vendors all in the same shop. And I would say in those, the prices tended to be lower like I was finding stuff for five, 10, $15 and up. Um, so the pricing is, you know, more than a thrift store, but super affordable for what I'm looking for. And then you've got uh, guys here, we call them the t-shirt bros who literally go to the bins every day and buy t-shirts and then they turn around and sell them to other sellers. Um, so I actually did a private buy uh, with a guy that I met through somebody else. Um, I was recommended to him, connected with him and his name is Alex. And we literally went to, his house and I bought like a hundred t-shirts just shopping his garage. And then he had in his basement, a whole bunch of other stuff. And then he was like, well, next time you come, uh, he's like, I've got some other guys that I can connect you with too. And, and so it's like, it's like an endless source for like the stuff that I look for. And then the thrift stores are like an endless source for the stuff that mm -hmm. you look for. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And I'm going to tell you that I bought so much stuff. I'm, we already shipped a hundred pounds home and that was just mine. Um, I will probably ship another 150 to 200 pounds. Uh, mm. After the show, we're going to go buy some Easy. more boxes yep. and back them. Probably 300 pounds of 99% vintage and nothing that I'm going to sell for less than $50. Yeah. And I didn't pay more than $10 for any individual item except two things that I paid up on. I'll show you. But like, it's it's insane. It it's is really crazy. Insane. And I'm my counts, I think I'm at 233 pieces now, all vintage t-shirts and sweatshirts crazy 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 and and i've also found that like i think because it's so plentiful here everybody's super supportive of each other yeah. and it's like i had so many people being like hey you should talk to so and so he's got a bunch of stuff to sell and you should mm -hmm. talk to this guy and i'm going to connect you to this guy and it's like no, there's nobody who's like protecting or being like i, I want to be the only one selling to you kind of thing mm -hmm. um it's a it's a super connected community which i love and luckily because we live in vegas it's a quick flight it's super cheap to ship, so we don't have to move to Colorado, okay? So I don't um, want them to move to Colorado. I do, but I don't because I want a place to go visit in Vegas that's besides true. just the slot machines. True. <laughs> I mean, the slot machines are, are I mean, really your draw. Go, but, I mean, you know. we end up at the slot machines, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been really great. I have to say, it's it's kind of a um, it's been eye opening for me. So, like, usually when we do these big sourcing trips, ninety percent of it is for me, right? So, because Katie has her own buys that she makes and her bulk buys and her connections with people. And the sourcing for me has to kind of come from all over the place. So um, when we do these trips, it's like she'll find like five or 10 things maybe. And I send, you know, have bulks of stuff. But uh, this is even better than I usually do. Way better yeah. than I usually do. 
It's so it's crazy and, and much better quality stuff than I'm used to finding even in Vegas. So it's definitely worth it for us to do this maybe quarterly. I would yeah. say. Well, and the thing is like, I have tried to do some of the networking and, and connecting with people in Vegas to be like, Hey, cause I've had, I've gone to like pop-ups and had guys be like, Hey, you know, if you want to do some wholesale stuff, I can give you some really good pricing. And then I try to connect with them later and I get ghosted or they respond a couple of times and they're kind of wishy-washy and it's hard to kind of nail it down. And it's like, it's just totally different here. And I buy a lot from like Jesse at Yesterday's Fits, mm -hmm. um, but there's a limit to how much stuff that he has coming in that's kind of like within my wheelhouse. And that's just the nature of it. Um, and so sometimes I'll go in there and, and I have the money to spend and I just, there isn't enough inventory there for me. So yeah, mm -hmm. like what Vicky was saying, we go on these trips and I just assume like, I've kind of like resigned myself to, I'm not going to find anything. This is just a vacation for me. Maybe I'll be able to hit like a, a Buffalo, um, uh, Buffalo exchange or something like that, you know, and maybe I'll be able to get like 20 cool t-shirts. That's about it. So I did all, it's all clothing, uh, Greg and, and some uh, linens. I definitely could have done some hard goods, but the clothing was so good that I didn't really need to. And I, and I love good vintage hard goods. Don't get me wrong. I would have, if that had, you know, if I'd found anything fantastic, but I didn't really, but like it, it's been, it's been great. It's really been great. And Kristen's rural squirrels in the chat now. And um, yeah, she's, she was a lot of fun to go thrifting with too. We're definitely going to, uh, hang out more next time we come back. It's been overall, this has been a great trip. We were supposed to do this last year after the remix. And the reality is, is that a few people ended up with COVID kind of like what happened this year, but last year was worse. And um, we had all this booked last year and we had to cancel. So like now, um, you know, now yeah. we're like, thankfully we were, we were all fine. We didn't get sick. So we were like, okay, we're doing this. We're yeah. doing this. Don't you worry, Kristen. Liz almost forgot when we, cause we were gathering the stuff together that we were going to show, which let me tell you, it was hard to narrow down what to show. And Liz almost forgot the magical skirt, but she did get it. So we will be yes. showing that. Um, absolutely. And a couple of people had mentioned, like, even I think I saw uh, Pat, Patty in there saying, like, why don't, you know, maybe you should drive or whatever. And someone had said that before. No, she said she should have oh, driven so she could have yeah. gone through. So here's the thing. We, um, we talked about this before, but it's like a 10-hour drive, 10, 12-hour drive. The flight is so short. It's so, mm -hmm. and, and shipping home was cheap. Because the goods were so crazy cheap, cheap that it's like, forget it. We'll just no, no reason to waste two days driving. I'll tell you right now. So we did what three days in Denver. So two and a half days in Denver, mm -hmm. half of that, we weren't even shopping in Denver. We actually went out and did tours of the Stanley hotel out of Nestas park. So there was no shopping mm -hmm. for over half a day. I have a Jeep grand Cherokee. And literally if you see pictures, Katie looks like ET in the <laughs> closet. There was, and that's after shipping stuff home. Going to ship. So even if they drove, they're still going to have to ship hundreds of pounds yeah. of stuff. So home. we shipped three boxes, what, 30 pounds, 32 pounds, 22 pounds. And it was like 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so if let's say I'm shipping t-shirts, which are on average eight ounces each when you're, especially when you're talking about vintage t-shirts. So like half a, I mean, I'm literally, it's adding another quarter to 50 cent cost to per item per item to or ship a dollar it. per That's, item for me or something. So yeah. Cheryl's asked a couple of times, are you going to sell on whatnot or online? I think it's both. Uh, both. So for the stuff that I picked up, I'm pretty much all of it's going to be online. Um, I'm going to, I'm still trying to figure, I'm on a whatnot break at the moment. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. But for the stuff that I bought for this trip, none of it's whatnot. I mean, my pricing is some stuff I got for $5, but I would say the majority of it is like $8 and up. And that's not really a good There's not enough to room do. on whatnot because she does not, at this know, point, she's not getting the rally roots prices on whatnot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, and I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do whatnot moving forward, but We'll see. Do we want to get into it? We're yeah. So, so it. this is our Sunday live haul, but we're doing it a little different because it's kind of an impromptu. We weren't even sure we were going to do a show this week. I think we said we weren't. Um, but then it's like we found so much fun stuff that we were like, we want to show off what we got. Um, so we're not doing numbers this week, uh, which we'll just tell you they're sad and pathetic. Oh, we awful. barely worked for the last two months, I swear. So it's it's reflected in our sales. And um, we're not going to do sold highlights. So we're literally just going to hang out and show you guys cool stuff. Just that we haul. Up. Just a haul. But like I said, I, I got 233 pieces. And I would say not a single one is mediocre, in my opinion. So finally narrowing it down to like maybe 20 pieces was very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and the, probably the same for you. You were being selective. And that's what's crazy about I it. I was being selective and I found so much good stuff. So I've got like 20 to 30. 20, 25 pieces to show as well that I picked some of the cream of the crop, but honestly, it was such good stuff. Um, and I'm so excited and it's kind of like all over the place. And on, I don't think I, I think I have like two or three things that I paid up a little bit for. And when I show yeah. you, you'll, you'll know why. So and it's funny because you don't really thrift much and you were kind of just hanging out with us to like 
just be support. Just hang and, out. And you weren't even really thrifting. I and somehow you managed to come. You. Somehow you managed to come home with like a ton of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I did. So it's like well, it just finds you in Colorado. Well, we went to the bins and we had scheduled to go what Friday morning to the bins. And Thursday morning, we're like, let's just go up early because we can go two days. Like there's no rules. And you fill the whole cart both days. Yeah. So we were at Kearney Bins for the two days. But like the guy that I bought my hundred shirts from. He goes to the Aurora bins every day. Like there's so much good stuff here. It's <laughs> insane. Yeah. So I would say I, I figured mine out the other day. Uh, Vesca's Vintage pretty cool. For me, for my average buy cost, if I don't add in my $3 an item for my lister and the shipping. So let's call that maybe an extra $4 per item. My average cost was $6 an item uh, up to yesterday. So I didn't figure it out through yesterday. So, okay. So let's call it $10 an item. Let's 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 call it all, all in average cost ten dollars an item, and uh, you know my average sale price is about is sixty. Mm -hmm. So you know it's not ten times. I didn't pay a dollar for every item, but it's really good quality stuff. Nothing is mediocre. Yeah. So for me, when I'm shopping, like let's say I go to yesterday's fits, because of the way I source. I'm usually like ten to fifteen dollars is what I'll pay for a shirt that I can sell for forty to sixty dollars, if not more. But that's kind of where I'm at because it's like that's how you can get the good stuff. So with, like when I did the private buy, he had like a whole bunch where he was like, this is all the stuff that I'm at about 10 to 15 dollars. But the more you buy, obviously, that'll change the pricing. Well, I pick, I think I got like 43 T-shirts from that particular section and he priced them all at eight dollars a piece. So for me and they none of them were they were all like fantastic shirts, like not just boring mediocre vintage shirts they were all really cool graphic uh vintage t-shirts so eight dollars a piece like for me like i'm like that's a score that's crazy mm -hmm. and then his pricing for everything else it went like up to i think he did eight dollars and then he had like a stack that was like 10 and then he had a stack that was 15 and then 25 and then i think there was a small stack that was 40 and then there were a couple pieces that i did pay up for but just like a couple for the most part it was like super reasonable pricing and i don't mm -hmm. think either one of us are going to need to source before the end of the year so we can yeah. actually go into we're late heading into fourth quarter for a lot of reasons remix and all that kind of stuff but like the last couple of months of the year we can really bang out some great listings and and, and stuff like that and really get our stores stopped so yeah for sure and the thing is like it's it's super uh sustainable for us to be able to, like now I've got, with the stuff I have at home, I probably have like 300 pieces that still need to be photographed and, and including the stuff from this trip. That's going to last me for the next couple of months. Two months from now, three months from now, come back to Denver, mm -hmm. restock, get the same, you know, this could totally be like an every two months. And maybe for me, if because I have some connections now for the private buys and there's a couple of shops in particular where I got the most of my stuff, I know I could potentially just fly in by myself in the morning, rent a car hit the couple of private buys and the couple of shops, fill everything up, come on over to Liz's house to pa to package everything up and ship it and then fly home that night. Like mm -hmm. I could do something like that and literally do all my sourcing in Colorado. I'm just saying that's, it's possible that, it's I, feasible. Could pull that, that I could pull it off. Yeah. Why not try it? Why not try it? Why not try it? I'm certainly not going to source for the next couple of months because I spent a lot of money. <laughs> uh, we, both spent, did. we both spent a lot of money. But it's reasonable for a couple mm -hmm. months of sourcing. All right. So, all so right, like, wanna... yeah, let's show some, do you want to show what, 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 what I, Liz and I went into the store and got food? Oh, out. so first of all, two, we were talking about the co-ops or whatever. There were two, it's a, it's a, I'll tell you some of the places. One of them is called like, it's like house, the house collective H A U S E. And then I think the other location is slightly different. It's like house vintage, whatever they're in the freaking mall. So it's like, we were literally in the mall, like the dead malls. Like, yeah. you know, you've got a couple anchor stores and some crappy stores inside still. And you know, like all malls are now. So I was thrifting at the mall, which was we awesome. The and their mall. prices were fantastic. So definitely, you know, if you come into town, Colorado Springs, look up house collective and the prices were great. They have a whole rack. That's like $12 and under fantastic. I think I got 50 t-shirts between those two stops. But of course they were like going and doing other stuff in the we mall. Were mall walking. They were mall walking. They they were like doing lots of like we fast walking, high hands. With, with, with the weights around our ankles. Yes. And so Vicky yes. got, they can see that now on the screen. So just so you know, you're not hiding it. What'd you, what'd you get? Why are you going so slow? Because <laughs> it's so cute. Look at him. So what is that? It's the Build-A-Bear. Not everybody knows about it. He's Build-A-Bear E.T. He just came out this week. And we mm -hmm. all know Katie loves E.T., right? Yep. So like, look, 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 look. Can you see it? His, His finger, finger lights, lights up. up. So yeah, the Build-A-Bear just came out this week. 
How cute is that? How cute is that? So how much was it? Uh, he was about $50 with his little hoodie. Yeah. So the hoodie is like, he, I don't know why they only have one accessory for him. I feel like they could come up with some other stuff, like a little Coors beer, but you know, whatever. Um, but he was like, what, 35, I think. And then it was like maybe 10, 12, but plus tax. It'd be like yeah, it was bucks. like 50 bucks. But look how cute he is, guys. So you should go, you should definitely go get one if you are an ET lover because, uh, and you said you thought they might sell out. Yeah, it looks like it's, I mean, when they do these, they tend to be pretty popular, but yeah. Yeah, he's real cute. And he's soft, too. He's so cute. He likes so he was, your bo he was your bonus. He let it pick your nose with his little finger. <laughs> anyway, he's super, super cute. All right, so. Out of the way. So do you want to show, Liz, how about you go first? You go first. You're I already know guess. how to do this. You're I already know guess. how to do this. Whatever. Oh, go Liz. ahead. All right, I will start, and I'm going to start with, I'm, I'll probably do like, Explain what? real quick about the ARC stores Oh, and why it, why it was so good, which to be fair, we already had done an insane amount of thrifting and Vicky had already gotten an insane amount of stuff just going to the bins and regular thrift stores. And then yesterday, something ridiculous happened. So the ARC stores are kind of like the Goodwills of, of this area. Like so the there's like the have Savers or Goodwill, but like, yeah, there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. So um, the... The ARC stores, there's tons of them. ARC. ARC. And they hoard all of their vintage and funky items to put out in the Halloween costume section. Remember when Savers used to do that? Savers used to do that. And then you can still occasionally find one or two good things mm -hmm. at that time of the year. Well, they do this specifically. And I swear they just put them out yesterday. So, and yesterday, a lot of the stuff was 50% off that they were just putting out. So yeah. Saturdays I, are 50% off. Day we filled an entire cart in like one aisle. One aisle. And that first, the first store. one we went to, it had like four aisles of, of their costume section. Mm -hmm. And she literally had not gotten down one row and her cart was already overflowing. Yeah, it was crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. And the prices were excellent. Like the highest price, regular price things were like $10. And then the majority of them were 50% off of whatever. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to show some stuff and then I'll let Katie and then we'll do Liz, whatever. And so one of the things I got is one of my favorite things. It's probably not the most um, expensive thing, but it's super cute. So this was, this was not on sale. So this was $8.99 and this is a vintage 1960s lingerie. This is the little top. It's the I Dream of Jeannie like lingerie. So it's got the like the built-in panty and the big like that the sheer harem pants. And this is not a repro. This is 60s. It has an original tag in it. It's nylon. It's sheer. It's oh my God. It's like my favorite thing that I got. And it's not just because it's so cute and I've never seen anything like that. Now was this one 50% off? This was not. So it was $8.99. But I mean $8.99. Come on. And I'm gonna list this. I don't even know for what, to be honest with you, but it's over over a hundred, over a hundred. Um, and it's like, look, it's got the little jewels on it and the Rick Rack the jewels. So cute. So I love that. Um, and that's just like, that was one of the first things I found. And I was like, what? And then let's see. This is like full on repurposed, super cool, like granny core for now. My grandma would have worn that. And yeah. My grandma was funky and cool. So this was also full price, $10.99, right? So this is a vintage starter sweatshirt that someone took and I didn't even know that sewed all of these patches on all of these different, like it's like quilting patches and quilt squares, but it's tiny. It's so cute. That's this crazy. is another thing that's super funky and it's well done because they did all the piping and the fabric around the edges and filled it all in it, but it started, the base was a sweatshirt. So I will, I don't know what I'm going to list this for, but again, you know, my price is probably well over a hundred. I just, I love it. Yeah. It's very Sean Witherspoon. You're right. You're right, Allison. Yes. So I love this. Everything's in great shape. Mm -hmm. She's going to say, I love this after everything. I know. I know. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I am. Yeah. So uh, here's another item. This was also, this was full price $6.99. Yeah. The full price was like ridiculously affordable their t-shirts full price most of them were like 299 yeah. 250 like crazy okay, so crystal might appreciate this or some of my other real vintage lovers and knowers might appreciate this so i'm looking at the waist. this is a skirt i'm looking at the waistband of this skirt and these metal sewn on hook and eye grommets and this elastic and the way that this is made this is like uh like almost like feed sack material this is very turn of the century 
So this is very like Victorian era. Um, and I don't necessarily think the skirt is that old. It is handmade. They might have just repurposed hardware, but it is definitely vintage. And then it has this whole lot. This is all beaded and sequined and hand sewn all the way down with like this fantastic border print. And look at that. It's like this big eagle of sequins in, on it. That's so awesome. it's kind of very um, like Indian, wow. yet also like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to really describe it, but again, something I love, like Southwest yeah. type of style and design. Uh, Gina, this stuff so far has been from Arc Thrifts, which is uh, the thrift. It's a thrift store chain here, and there's they're all over the place. We've yes. got thirty one in the state. That's crazy. And they're in the state. Let's Let see. see. Uh, this is one that was fifty percent off. The full price was ten dollars. It was fifty percent. This was five dollars. Would you pay ten for it? I would have paid twenty for it. Yeah. This is don't say that too loud. I have to. I know, here. right? <laughs> True vintage uh, 60s. The colors are super bright and vibrant, psychedelic, um, long, like it's a full length, like hostess dress. But it's also a more generous size. It's really, really pretty. And it's a super bright, vibrant, like neon, like purple, pink, green, floral, in excellent condition. Now this is bark cloth, isn't it? No. Or no, no, it's not. It no. almost looks like it. It's fully lined, it's satin, it's very well made. Big metal zipper up the back. So like the, and uh, it's it's not homemade because it's got the dry clean tag. So this is, if it's got a dry clean tag, it's actually not 60s, it's 70s. So this is like, um, yeah, love this. It's beautiful. I would, I would wear this if this fit me too, Kelly. Um, yeah, great shape. And it's actually a little bit big. It's not extra small. Like a lot of the times, as many of you know, when you find vintage women's clothing, it's like it's made for smaller people. Mm -hmm. There are plus size vintage items, but they're harder to find. It's just not as um, not as noticeable. Now, this is bark cloth. This was three dollars and fifty cents. This was a 50 percent off vintage bark cloth maxi skirt in like this great um kind of like a medallion pattern great so, colors yep three dollars and fifty cents crazy so and it, this is also a larger size this has got a decent sized waistband with a great elastic waist and it's not a blown out elastic elastic waist um hundred dollars 75 to 100 so nurse with a purse so I love thrifting in Colorado so much that I moved from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Denver, Colorado to expand my, expand my reselling business. I can see why. Seriously, if we didn't live so close, we would be we would seriously be considering like, should we be moving for our mm -hmm. businesses? And honestly, the uh, yes, the prices are very high in this area, but Vegas is very high now too. So it's yeah. it's pretty comparable to where we are. And honestly, if we lived here, I think our uh, if, if by just by sourcing here and not living here, I think we're going to be able to increase our our sales. Mm -hmm. with the kind of stuff that we're finding. Uh, let's see. So this one was, this was full price at $7.99. I mean, God, it's such a rip off. Uh, <laughs> you know, and this is just, this is a really, really pretty 60s day dress and like pastels. Uh, this is handmade. It's got a little, um, like a flutter, like a cap flutter cap sleeve. What, what's a flutter mean for those it people just, that might not know? It just means that it's like, it has a little bit of, um, I don't know, movement. It's just, I don't know, same thing. You kind of, that's just what you call it. And it has the metal zipper up the back matching belt. It's almost like an early like Lily Pulitzer fabric, mm -hmm. um, but it's not. So this was, what did I say that was seven seven dollars? Um, handmade, but very, very well done. Not very nicely done. Hey Danny, what's up? And this would be like a this is like a what I would consider for my vintage, like a bread and butter vintage piece, but maybe nicer because the fabric and the pattern is really nice. So this would be maybe like $65, $75. So Greg wants to know how hard goods are. I mean, did we even look at hard goods? I swear I didn't even really look. So when we went to the thrift Maybe stores. Maybe next time. When we went to the thrift stores, we didn't look at hard goods at all. Um, as far as the the bins, I mean, there are definitely people there who that's all. We were talking to, what was her name, Elizabeth? Or yep, Elizabeth. And bins. she has new clothing at all. I think she only does hard goods. Yep. And it, she seems to do pretty well. So. Mm -hmm. I we, honestly, we didn't even look because we because we there was so we much to be good. able to carry it back and ship it back. So it's like we weren't really looking at hard goods. There was so much good vintage clothing that I, I definitely would have been looking outside of that if I hadn't found so much plentiful vintage. Um, and we all know like vintage clothing is is my favorite. Of course, I love hard goods and you need to have that mixture in your store. At least I do. Um, however, I, there was no shortage. So like it was great. 
Yeah. I, I mean, when we went to the ARC thrift stores, she didn't even, she got so much just in the Halloween section that she didn't even go look in the regular section. I didn't even look in the other parts of the store. So we were trying to hit the stores. I was like, I just want to hit the Halloween section because of the way they have this laid out. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So this is another one. This was also $3. This was 50% off. This is a vintage authentic. I'm going to say it's probably sixties, maybe seventies. I'll have to do a little bit of research. Um, candy striper, red cross uniform. Uh, it has a little bit of a tear back here, but I don't think it's going to affect much. A couple stitches in it. It's just a cute little pinafore jumper. Um, if this were older, the really old ones, the you know Red Cross uniforms sell in the hundreds. Now, because this one is a little bit newer, like I said, 60s, 70s ish, this will this will probably go for like 65 to 75. But still, mm -hmm. this was three dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, do you want to? I'm going gonna, gonna to do one more, and then you, okay. I'll pass it on. And then you guys can do some. So uh, this one is not tagged. This is handmade. It's very well handmade. And this was $4. This was 50% off. It's $4. This is a uh, like an older little girl's dress. So maybe like a 10 or a 12 year old little girl. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this was made with a Daisy Kingdom pattern and fabric. Um, and for those of you that are may, may be aware, maybe not aware, Daisy Kingdom from the 80s and 90s is highly collectible. The clothing and the dresses, some of them are store uh, factory made and they'll have a Daisy Kingdom tag on them. But some of the items are just Daisy Kingdom branded fabric and patterns that people made dresses mm -hmm. and clothes out of. They did it with like dolls and little girls clothes. And this is just this super well-made, heavy, multi-layered like Christmas dress with like, like it's poofy. It has like three layers on the skirt. Crazy. It's just super well made. So yeah, Laura Ashley ish. Um, so if this is Daisy Kingdom, I'm actually going to assume that it is. To be honest with you, I might do a little more research to find find the fabric. But this could go for like two to three hundred dollars. So crazy. And this is like I would say it's like a size ten little girl's dress maybe. See, and this is where. You, know, you, you hear about like bolos and people talking about brands and stuff like that. When it comes to women's vintage, it's there's so much to know and to learn that's like you just can't go by a label. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that you even know that and it's, it's handmade and you know probably what patterns. I mean, that's just crazy. That's a crazy thing to know. It's just, in my opinion. I mean, it just, I'm you know, saying. like everybody has things that they know and they just kind of, you know, it, it seeks, it seeps into your brain. I don't know why. Like yeah. every once in a while, I'll find something up. Like, like when I found that that full house quilt, someone yeah. else had made that a bolo somewhere years ago. So I knew yeah. about it, but it was such, it's such a random thing to mm -hmm. know. And so then Danny, when I found Mount, mine, yeah. I remember you posting about right. it. Yeah. So Danny wants to know, is that considered cottage core? I think that this is more Victorian style than cottage core. Cottage core is tends to not go toward the darker fabrics mm -hmm. as much. Uh, but it's, it's, it's on the cusp. I mean, I think it could, it could go across that to that genre too, but I will say that the cottage core thing is not as much popular for little girls as it is for the adult women. And it's starting to phase out, it's starting to phase out. It's not as popular as it was last year. So how, how would you authenticate or confirm with yourself that it's like Daisy kingdom? Um, you know, I don't know for sure. I, I will do some, some Google searching on like Daisy Kingdom fabrics and patterns and things like that and see if it's like, I, I'm like 95% Well, Kristen sure, thinks but. that her mom still, might still have that pattern. So that might be good if she could there like, you go. You could, yeah. maybe you could get like a picture of it or something. And kind but of it's, I, it. and, and even if I said it and said that there's no tag, but it was made through Daisy Kingdom, you know, pattern or whatever, it's people that buy it and collect it, they're going to know too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So interesting. Okay. All right. I, well, let's answer this question really quick, if we can. Do we do we know of any vintage trends that are on the horizon? I don't know about on the horizon, but definitely gaining momentum and super popular and valid right now is absolutely '90s and Y2K clothing for women. So the like the low slung mud and lei jeans that like you know like the, like it's like you know barely above your crotch. Like the the rise is like two and a half inches. Um, those low rise, low slung, um, you know, flare jeans are back. It doesn't matter what the brand is, especially like mud and LEI and that kind of stuff was, those are just like that was it mall brands, mall brands. And then like, um, 
you know, it's all in the stores right now. It, current brands are just replicating everything from the nineties. You know, yep. the, the, the little ribbed Henley tank tops and short shirt, short sleeve shirts that go under that kind of thing. Overalls, overalls are always good, but they're even more popular now. Overalls, uh, corduroy, wide whale corduroy overalls, um, skirts. Man, I used to love, I used to, I used to go thrifting cause I grew up going thrifting. And I remember in the nineties, like early mid nineties, it was all about finding mm -hmm. the wide mm -hmm. uh, corduroy. Like Genko jeans. Like, like not that that ever went away really, but that whole rave wear, that grunge wave. I had at least five stuff. pairs of corduroy pants. And now my nephew who's 17, he's mm -hmm. all about the corduroy pants. So it's, it's really interesting. As far as t-shirts go, I will say that the, the golden age of like the craze of vintage tees that really took off during um, the beginning of COVID and when, you know, when you were seeing like the $7,000, um, you know, and stuff. well, $7,000 Lion King or what was it, Aladdin mm -hmm. t-shirt and stuff like that. It's definitely died down now. And so like, there's all these people who, who spent way too much money on some t-shirts back then. And now they're not worth anywhere near what they were worth before. Like as far but as it's actually a good thing, because in my opinion, because it's like, it's not these, it's not these crazy prices. It's kind of going back to normal again. And so a lot of the stuff like the bread and butter stuff is still good. And it's still, you know, so like plaid plaid is in all the nineties fall colors, like that mustard yellow, the dark, mm -hmm. uh, the burgundy, the eggplant, like purpley color, mm -hmm. uh, hunter green, navy blue, all of that is coming back and in, um, plaid, lots of plaid, plaid skirts, plaid pleated skirts with tights, with those big chunky pilgrim shoes from the nineties, big chunky heels, platform heels um like you know doc martens i mean that was my my high school and right after graduation that was my jam and that's what's big right now yeah so um danny i mean it's di it's definitely di i don't think it's necessarily because of supply i think that it's just there was a time when people were going crazy and it was like mm -hmm. you know stuff like the vin the the virtual flea and like these online selling and all the guys kind of competing to be like oh the next big thing and the, and i i paid even more money than this guy paid and i have all this money to throw around it's just that that stuff's just the not flex. the, the flex. flexing. That's not sustainable long term, and so I don't think that there's like more supply necessarily now. There's definitely. I mean, you go to the vintage, the thrift store; it's hard to find. Um, I think it's just that there's an end to everything. When, goes through phases, right? I mean, it yeah, just does. We've yeah. talked about this a lot. Like stuff that used to sell five years ago is not selling anymore, and we're like, oh my god, this used to be a great brand. You know, Vineyard Vines yeah. was a great brand. You can't give that crap away. But like ThriftCon is happening right now in Vegas. And, and Britt was just saying that it's a lot cheaper this year. There were a lot more $5, $10 racks for t-shirts because it's like things are kind of settling back into more normal pricing, which is, I think, a good thing because, you know, I never got into the whole rack tee. Like, I can't keep up with the whole banger tee stuff. I artificial like, I like the bread and butter, the stuff yeah. I can sell for $60 to $100. Like, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's see. What I wanted to show... Hold on, you guys. So first, I have a stack here that I'm going to go through really fast. One of the things that I love about thrifting and getting t-shirts in Colorado is a huge place for skiing and for all kinds of like outdoor sports and stuff like that. And you guys know how I feel about skiing t-shirts. Um, and so I shockingly got some skiing t-shirts. And so I was just going to go really fast and just kind of show you some of the cool, like fun designs and stuff like that. This is just a, a long sleeve um, ski one. And I think this is one of the ones I probably only paid like $8 for in my bulk buy. Um, nice long sleeve, pretty thick. And it says Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, it's almost like a sweatshirt. It's real thick. Yeah. Some of these I paid up for like this one. I mean, I paid $26 for this, but it's from the seventies and I was just excited to get a seventies t-shirt. So I, I, you know, I didn't pay over $20 for a lot of stuff, but I was just excited to get a cool ski. Now, what do you think you're going to sell these for? That's the thing. So you've got this one that you paid about $8 for. What are you going to sell it for? Um, all the of these, one. I probably will price at like $70 and hope to sell for at least 50. So paying $26 for a shirt I'm going to sell for 50 is not a great investment. Um, but I have a special place in my heart for skiing t-shirts. So I tend to be okay with spending a little bit more. Um, like this one I did pay $20 for, um, but I should be able to sell it for 50 uh, this is just like a thrashed one that I got for my private buy that I didn't pay more than $8 for, but it's super cool. It says nights get longer, days get shorter, snow gets deeper, life gets better. And this one is just absolutely destroyed. 
can't with the setup. I can't really see anything. I but, can see it. Uh, it. It was fine. That's it's good. This one, um, I paid up a little bit for. I think I paid twenty four. Right, this one's weird. This one I had to get because it's it's ski Hawaii. Like what? I don't know. Is there like an artificial mountain snow or whatever? Why are you pointing at that? It's just it's a vintage crazy shirts. Yeah, that brand. Yep. Anyway, but I've never seen one with palm trees. So how cool is that? And it's long sleeve. What's it say on the side? I can't you see? tell what that says. I don't know. Anyway, long sleeve ski ho ski Hawaii. Uh, this one steamboat powder. Just another shitty day in paradise. <laughs> I love it. Uh, this one ski bum official ski bum. Um, this one I paid fifteen bucks for. And these are all in great condition. Like this is super bright green. It's not faded. There's no. I think I feel like these people actually laundered their stuff before they put it in the store. This is it smells of, like laundry detergent and not gross bin smell. This is one of those. Uh, was it Kleben? Is that Kleben. Yeah, Kleben. Look at it. kitty cat, the sk uh, skiing kitty cat. This one I'll probably price up a little bit more. You'll get at least a hundred <laughs> for that one. Kleben stuff is really collectible. This I paid fifteen for, and it's a kind of a sweatshirt mock turtleneck sort of. I like that the the ski has little skiers coming down on it. Um, and then this is. Now we've been shopping at bins for years too. Like she, Naomi says, we, gosh, I've been shopping at the bins for like years. It's it's not nothing new to shop at the bins. No, but some bins are better Millions than Millions of people shop at the bins every day and that's where they get their stuff. But it, you're right. It's different bins in different cities are yeah. entirely There's different. There's bins that are, when, we, when I first moved to Vegas, the bins were garbage. There were two locations. It was only stuff that came from, from Goodwill stores that hadn't sold. They, they did like maybe a couple of rotations. And then by the afternoon, they just stopped doing rotations. Yeah, it was terrible. It was a waste of time. Now they have a new location. It's half direct uh, donations. Mm -hmm. And it's decent. Like Vicky can go and get some decent stuff. And sometimes she'll find some really good stuff. The ones we're going to in Colorado, it's like every day. Next level great Amazing shit. Yeah. shit fill up your cart kind of stuff. So yeah. it, it's, I've been shopping bins since 03. Yeah. And I've, this is like the eighth, ninth state I've lived in and I've shopped bins in every state. It's, I've not seen this level. Yeah. yeah so, this is like next yeah. level stuff. Um, and then this uh, ski Estes park mountain air. And this is one, I like this one cause it's a snowboard. So it's pretty cool. And you paid 15 for that one. Uh, that one I paid 15 for. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I definitely paid up for some of the skiing ones because I got a special place in my heart for the skiing ones, guys. Can I do like two more and then have Liz do, do, do some, a couple of her things? Okay. Yeah. Um, I got this No Fear t-shirt, No Fear on the front, and then the back says Balls. So, I mean, come on, guys. Balls. <laughs> I, I think I paid like 10 bucks for this one. Uh, this... More balls. What, I paid, I'm sensing a theme here. What's happening? <laughs> this I paid 18 for, uh, and I was excited about this one because um, of our friend Shelly, who loves playing the bingo. This one says, what has 75 balls and keeps the lady smiling? Bingo. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, this, I don't know what's happening in this. Cherry Pickers Trot, 1987. It's like a-, a Road race. A, a, right, but what's the, there's Cherry, they're running to the outhouse. Um. I guess you got the trots. I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't. That's weird. That's I love cool it. Graphic though. I think it's awesome. Love it. Uh, this one I definitely paid up. This one I paid twenty four for. So there were some of these that I definitely. I kind of. It's like I got some such great prices on my private buy that I felt like I could pay up a little bit for some other ones that I found. Right. So it gets, still gives you a good average. Mm -hmm. This. Yeah, this one I paid like thirty bucks for. So I definitely paid up, up for some, but that going on? it says we light them, we bite them. And it's like a helicopter, police helicopter. It's got a dog biting a, looks like a, some sort of robber, just ridiculous. So yeah, I definitely, there were definitely some that I paid up a, a bit for. Um, Someone asked any Betty Boop, Katie? I don't think so. No Betty Boop, no Betty Boop. Uh, this I got for in the private buy. I think this is probably one that I paid more like 20 bucks for dead stock though. Um, this is a Pepsi one t-shirt and just a really awesome graphic, nice, big size XL, um, in great condition, if not dead stock, uh, just a really cool shirt. And more this, 
Oh, I got this from the digging pit, but oh, they cut all the prices off on these ones. But let Liz I think this is when I paid up a little bit, $20. And this is from software to the internet, think fast, Intel inside Pentium. But it's got the really cool all over like circuit board print. All over, all over prints. All over prints. Nerdcore. But it's a 2XL, nice big size, single stitch. I'll, I should be able to sell this for like 100 So, all right, you want to show some stuff? Yeah, Let's sure. Do it. So the vintage is over. Sorry. I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I actually got some vintage. You and did. again, I saw, I tried to just not shop a whole lot. Mm -hmm. you, because, she was a good scout, though. Oh, mm -hmm. I was throwing these guys things left and right. Oh, yeah. So because I wanted them to fill their car. I have access to this every day. Um, not vintage, but Swedish. This tablecloth, Christmas theme here. I love linens. Um, and this is a good, this was a bins find. Mm -hmm. Our bins here, I don't know if it's like this everywhere. Our bins, our linens are 49 cents a pound. Yeah. Yeah. So not it's like crazy. that. In Vegas. Even the regular bins are $1.69, which I think is cheaper yeah. than Vegas. It's, it? No, it's the same as Vegas. Oh, okay. But Vegas weighs everything is $1.69. Yeah, so I love Ben's Linens, 49 yeah. cents a pound. Um, and what do you think you'll sell that for? That one's 50, between 40 and 50. It's, it looks like it's brand new. Like, and I remember it cost you, what, two bucks maybe? Not, um, like Not the, I, paid, I paid for it. So now, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was free. It was a buck. <laughs> maybe a buck. Um, Kristen, this one is vintage. And Kristen asked earlier if I was going to show this skirt. We all fell in love with this skirt from a vintage shop on Broadway which Katie said, oh, it was kind of priced up a little bit. I'm not a vintage person. I think I only got like two things there. But I, I fell in love with this. Too. Kristen held it up and she put it back. And I'm like, I cannot leave this maxi skirt. This is the waist. So cute. And these patches. They're all so what wool. is it, 70s? They're all wool. This is 70s. See, I've got, I would kept saying, I'm like, man, if I only knew somebody to teach me about vintage. Hmm. Hmm. Imagine that. Hmm. Um, it is tiny. Um, I, this was, it was 40 bucks, wasn't it? It was 30, 30, 30 and change. Okay. 30 bucks. So, and I really, I just wanted this because I have a really cute video of Kristen holding this up, kind of modeling it for Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's fully lined. It is not a repurposed quilt, but it looks like one. Yeah. And, and yeah, a, a lot of people do that. It's a tag. It was made like this. There's actually another one listed in another state so with this tag. It's a different size. So this was produced. Yeah. It's, but it's. it's gorgeous it looks new you should be able to sell for 100 yeah at least yeah yeah it is super cute i just want to kind of try my luck to see if i can if i can get traction on social media yeah with this yeah i think it's see. really cool yeah um another bins find this is like maybe 10 ounces never heard of this brand before it's almost a uh Kind of like the sun. It almost protection. feels like yeah, like like almost like swimsuit material without the stretch. I don't yeah. really know. Just it's a little drop waist dress. I figured it was lightweight, but this tag caught my eye, and I just bought it anyways. I was like, that looks like a quality tag. This is a easy ninety five without. Yeah, really what was looking. the tag? What did it say on it? Just in this case it is. is so the, what's the name? Can you, can you read it? Tucker, somebody with contacts? Tucker Nuck. Tucker Nuck. T U C K E R N U C K. Tucker Nuck. Yeah, Tucker mm -hmm. Nuck. Never heard of it before. Never found it. Never sold it. Easy. Mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, Rob, Robin said she thinks she hid. What'd you say? She thinks what? she hid somebody in the chat by mistake. She's one of the, um, she's one of our admins. She has a wrench. So okh. she thinks she hid 1987 ventures. I don't know how to go in and check. Yeah, that. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry if sorry. Sorry if, if you Robin, got hit. Sorry if Robin hid you. Do we have anybody else in there that has a wrench that can maybe take a look and see? We're really far away from this. I can't see it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh wait, I think I can. You they just got timed out for 300 seconds. They'll be all right. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, 1987 ventures. Tracy will be fine. She'll come back in a, in a yeah, minute. Yeah, it's 300 seconds. It they just can't say anything. That was unintentional. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So this was 50% uh, off at ARC, $3. It's H&M, but it's Marnie for H&M, which Marnie is a higher-end women's wear. It's current. Um, I haven't looked it up. It was the only reason for $3 it was a gamble. But some of the branded H&M 
Yeah. Forever I've sold Marnie well. H&M before skirts uh, for like 60 bucks. So I think you could do well with that. I mean, that's at least mm -hmm. 30 or 40 because it's a top, you know what I mean? So it's Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this brand, a Western brand, it's a Southwestern vest, but this Wamaker tag. I've sold this brand before. I did a quick look up because I've never sold a vest. It's always been sweaters or Western See, I've shirts. Only sold that. I've only sold, sold vests. Hmm, I have only really. found. So I'm 50, 70 without yeah. looking at it. And that's a great the, pattern. It's it a is. great pattern. And this was, again, on a 50% off from the costumes. And there, there are buttons on it. They're nickel. So they're like uh, they're like silver mm -hmm. nickel buttons. Does it look like a little buffalo nickel too? Some of them do sometimes. I don't know if it's It's, it's a southwestern. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And then one more, because you got to love Colorado. I paid full price of six dollars and ninety nine cents mm -hmm. for the southwestern Double D Ranch. Let me not put it in coffee, but a, a really a newer Double D Ranch yeah. tag. Just a basic linen beaded right. linen short sleeve sweater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and if you know anything about Double D Ranch, they. It's super expensive. It's super expensive. It still sells really well. It's kind of gone down over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, but this is still an easy 60 to 100 without looking it up. Crazy. So. C -c -c crazy. Uh, Naomi. So I took a break from whatnot for the remix, like the week before, the week during. And then, of course, we came to Colorado. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do whatnot from here on out. I need to change some things because it, it is taking up too much of my time. So maybe just going on without having stuff preloaded. I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure that out. But definitely we both, uh, we, we all of us sell on multiple platforms. So, yeah, we sell on multiple platforms. I'm, I, whatnot is not quite there for me yet. I've said this before. Uh, there's, you know, I'm not. I, I appreciate my whatnot buyers, which have mostly been my viewers and other sellers. So I definitely appreciate that, but you're not my market, right? You want to buy it. If you're going to buy it from me, you're going to buy it to flip it. And I know some of you have done very well. A couple actually in chat, I know have purchased from me and, and flipped mm -hmm. things for good prices, which is fine. Great. I'm mm -hmm. happy for you. Uh, but it is not, there's not enough actual organic vintage women's buyers there yet or collectors. So I'm, I'm willing to accept a little less money for a fast sale and whatnot, but I'm not willing to accept 10% of what I'll get everywhere right. else. So I'm happy to be in there in the ground, you know, ground up on a, on a new platform and a new, you know, uh, startup company. And I love the concept. So I think it will be there eventually. I'm going to keep my toe in. I'll probably do one show a month to get rid of some older stuff is my, yeah. Yeah. My plan. Yep. Um, all right. Anything else? I've got some more. Do you want to keep your stuff is so much more fun well, you, and interesting. So, so, you want me to do another? Stuff. All right. I'm going to do, I only have actually a few more things in this bin. So I'll, I'll probably just clear out mine and then, and then, I'll do yeah, then you can do more. So one of the things I purchased, uh, we went to that guy's house, um, we that Katie, the basement picking, the basement picking and the garage picking some stranger letting three middle-aged chicks in his house to, to source mm -hmm. right in his house. But anyway, he was super nice. Um, I purchased a few things from him and he had originally wanted a hundred dollars a piece. He had a bunch of Pendleton, vintage Pendleton blankets. I picked out the two that I liked the best as far as patterns. And they were started out around a hundred dollars a piece. I think because I bought more, there was a little bit of a discount. I probably ended up paying about 75 to $80. One of them I've already shipped home, but, uh, this one I'll show because it's a great pattern. So this is a vintage Beaver state Pendleton, um, in some really, really great colors. Mm -hmm. So, um, it has, it's just like, you know, it's like camping colors, right? So it's like chocolate brown with different greens. Great it reminds colors. me of like forest and trees and stuff. The other nice thing about Colorado beyond and like then the has, stuff is that you're going to find more Pendleton stuff. And then it has the rainbow kind of like colors. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's really pretty. This actually has some wear. It has some moth holes in it, uh, but no fading. And I haven't looked this one up yet specifically for this pattern. But usually when I sell vintage Pendleton, I'll hold out. Some people sell them way too cheap. Uh, this is going to be at least, you know, two to three hundred dollars uh depending on the price. It's, it's funny because she wanted to ship that and i'm like no, no no you have to show that on sunday and she's like yeah but i paid up for it and i'm like who cares you paid like 75 and you're gonna sell it for over 200 dollars. like that's still when it's something where you know it's gonna sell for a certain price it's and still it sells, a significant fine even if it's and it does thrifted. sell fairly fast so yeah. like it doesn't um you know it's not gonna sit for like two years you know what i mean no like it'll sell fairly fast that's a very good one um and I like Alice and Vicky, you suck. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that. 
Uh, let's see what else did I pick? Uh, did I pick up? So this one was. I didn't see that. You guys bought so was, much stuff. I, I haven't know. seen. I'm now, like, what? this one is from the bins, and this is the brand. So it's an Irish wool avoca, A V O C A hand weavers. That's the tag. So it's vintage, but it's a wrap skirt. Uh, oh, this one was from the other place. So this was $4. Yeah, Kristen says, that's not paying up for Pendleton, all caps. <laughs> I know, right? Seriously, Kristen, this is, she's so weird about like wanting I'm to only so pay $5 so for everything. <laughs> it's like, it's almost shameful that she was paid a whole $75 for a freaking Pendleton blanket. She's going to sell for over 200 Ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a long wrap maxi skirt. It's wool. It like looks like a blanket. This actually feels like it could be dead stock because it is so bright and crispy. Mm -hmm. It's a really nicely made wool uh, wrap skirt and it just has the binding with the snap. So like various sizes on it. And then this would probably be like, I don't know, $75 or so. Unless I look it up and realize that that particular weaving company is like, you know, very highly collectible, which again, I didn't, you know, sight unseen without looking up the brand, 75 to a hundred dollars on that. There you go. So, um, Okay, a few more. I have, I think I paid 25 for this, but it might've been 30, <gasps> but I think it's 25. 25, what? Why are you even showing this? It's so embarrassing. You paid 20, $25, it. whoa. This, I didn't spend $25 on anything, I'm just saying. <laughs> so Allison will, will, will know this and respect this. I don't find this in, in Vegas. I found it maybe once in my life. So this is a, a vintage Filson. Uh, so it's a Filson wool vest it's green it's in perfect condition mm -hmm. uh, all the cool pockets got the front pocket and it's a big size so maybe 150 or so again haven't quite looked it up but it's <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> so like that's a great filson uh item this was from the same pick from the same from the same guy's house so this is a uh, rock mount ranch wear i did spend 35 dollars on this one mm -hmm. this is vintage but uh, vintage 70s Rock Mount Ranch. Look at this pattern. So awesome. So it's a Western shirt with the pointed spread in collar. Crazy good condition. In great crispy condition in all these bright, tiny little peace signs. Like it's, it's fantastic. How much are you going to sell it for? I mean, I'm going to ask like 125. So I don't know what I'll sell it for, but yeah, I'm, I'm love it, love it, love mm -hmm. it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep going. I got some great pieces. This was... That was from that red, white, and blue place. Yep. Oh, that was the first place. This yeah. was the first place. This is handmade, but it is vintage, 60s, 70s. I paid $5.99. And it's this... Super bright. Super bright little mini dress with these big, big, big balloon semi-sheer sleeves and this great groovy hippie pattern. I just... And it's got like this stretchy smock top so this could either be like a long tunic top for somebody that's tall or it would be like a mini dress either mm -hmm. way love it 5.99 love it love it and so what, what i find really cool is some people had like emailed katie and vicky were like hey these are these are my honey holes you know and then they're like hey i like to go here so mm -hmm. we kind of got a good source from local people's because I don't shop up in Denver. So when we were up there, it was like, great source from sourcers. Like, right. Like, yeah, it's, yeah I could be <laughs> Barb. You're so right. I could totally see Jody wearing that too. I think she's too tall. Uh, but if, 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 if she were a little bit tiny or she could probably wear it, yeah. I mean, she would wear it. Well, like we all, those of you that met Jody at the remix, come on now. Isn't she not like the, uh, like a bright light. Yeah. She's like a big butterfly. I love her. Patty says she had a dress like that in the seventies. She's yeah. so bright and outgoing and bubbly and happy. And like was dressed like a, like in these funky, great, bright attention okay. getting outfits every, I just love her. She's the sweetest thing. So, okay. So this one came from that first stop too. It's 12 99. But this is also, this is vintage, late 70s, early 80s, uh, just an acrylic sweater dress. Um, I did pay up a little bit for this. It's peach. It's got the stripes. Real cute. This is, again, like a kind of a staple thing. So like 60, 60, 70. Um, I have like five more. It's five more. Sorry, guys. Hope you're not bored. Um, Nobody is bored. You always <laughs> think they're getting bored. They're here hanging out with us. So All let's right. see what we got. Well, I like to watch because I watch you. Guys. This is weird being on this end, but I love watching because I learn. Mm -hmm. So this is a vintage. Um, 
I paid, I think I paid 35. This is the private buy. Oh. I think I paid 35 to $40 for this, but this is a vintage hand knit Kawachan sweater with, Love with it. the, um, with the, like an Aztec, that's a, that's a Phoenix or an Eagle. Um, and then it's got the big shawl collar with the pockets in the front. This is actually going to be seventies because it has the, the faux leather wrapped buttons. So it's a good size. It's maybe it's, it's awesome. like a medium. It's not a huge or like a I love like extra it. Hall. So again, like that would be 150, maybe more. Maybe People more are things. outraged that you are accusing them of being bored. The horror. Yeah. Your stack's so high, like I bet it's gonna fall yeah, over. It's, oh, I got well, my t shirts are there too. So. I also, I'm yeah. afraid I don't want it on the floor because then Keen I'll think it's a bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um now this. This he only charged me like twenty five dollars for, and I would have paid a lot more. Don't you love it when you're expecting something to be more, and then they're like, "Oh, that's only blah blah blah." Yeah, this is this was twenty five dollars. Yeah, just when I think you couldn't suck more. See, Allison, I know just that. Wait. Just you wait. Just I, you wait, Allison. Wait, like, wait for this one, Allison, because this is it. This is where you're going to be like, "That's it." She's going to rage stomp out of the chat. Anyway, so this is uh, this is vintage Pendleton. Uh, you only charged me twenty five dollars for it. This is sixties or seventies Pendleton, which is one of the it's harder. Got some little. Oh, it's got issues. It's got issues. It has issues. But here's the Pendleton sweater. Southwestern Pendleton sweater with the leather wrapped buttons. I think that's why he charged you so little. Oh, it's roached. Yeah. yeah but the, the buttons being missing. There's one button one missing, button. but I actually have. I purchased a whole uh, bunch of vintage leather, wrap buttons. leather buttons that I can re just replace all of them. Or Crystal can just replace all of them. <laughs> Uh, and it's, so it's definitely, ha it has moth holes. It's chewed up in the back on the collar. Oh, 20 bucks. That's ridiculous. And on the sleeve, it's definitely all chewed but, up too. But now does that add value to certain demographics? For some they, people, they some, just don't care or what? It's I, not, I don't know, what, I don't know what it'll add value, but it doesn't detract it from it a whole lot. Okay. Know? When it's a really good vintage piece, even if it has like with the t-shirts, like mm -hmm. the roached out t-shirts, it mm -hmm. adds character. This is like a really nice broken in great vest that's in a decent size it's it's a size large but it's a, it's a vintage large so it's probably like a medium medium but it's i, I really don't know what i'm gonna say for it say about like what do you say about i just you i just, just show describe pictures them. and say you take photos and say there's moth moth holes i actually would probably put like um destroyed roached and stuff like that as keywords because some people look for that stuff but I, I really don't know what i'm going to price this at yet i have to kind of look and see if i can find one it may be a fairly rare pattern um, either way, like I said, I paid like $25. This is well over a hundred, well over a hundred. So I'm like, maybe it could be 300. It could be 120. Um, I'm guessing like a hundred, 120. I think a hundred, 125 is where it's going to be, but yeah, it's, it's like, just, it's a fantastic. So pretty. Yeah. Okay. Just a few more. Sorry. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. Quit sorry. apologizing. <laughs> it's so good. Quit Ooh. apologizing. And just like, uh, Cheryl said, if somebody's bored, they'll sign off, but quit apologizing to the good people mm -hmm. here. When I get bored, I sign off every week. Yeah, so. every week because she gets bored very quickly. As soon as the chat dies down, I'm done. <laughs> I was telling Katie and Vicky, I was like, oh, I don't even really watch you guys. I'm just in it for chat. So this is really <laughs> weird. I don't know. I miss you guys. Um, so uh, this is vintage, a vintage Roper. The brand is Roper. So like that's a pretty common Western brand. But like, look, this was like 25. Um, <laughs> it's got the, all the embroidered yellow roses, black Western wear with the snap sleeves. It's just, this is a great one. So this is actually the whole rockabilly and um, like low rider community that likes to wear a lot of rockabilly. It kind of has some crossover in the fashion that like Latino low rider thing. Mm -hmm. um, th this is a very popular style and design that goes with that. So it's like Western, yes, but it also crosses over into like rockabilly and pinup and, uh, and low rider. Like it's like a whole different type of culture, which has a lot of crossover in the fashion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still going guys. It's okay. <laughs> okay. These are the ones that Liz was like, are you kidding me? So we're digging around in the bins. I did buy a few pairs of shoes, not too many, but I picked up a pair of boots and I was like, oh, these feel like quality. And I'm looking, I thought they may be fry. Cause I was like, so mm -hmm. looking on the heel for the little stamp on the F and 
And I'm like, well, these are really quality. I can tell. And so then I pull them out, turn them over and I look at the sole and the soles are hand nailed soles. Kristen says, I love seeing all the things I missed out on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, these are really like this, like a brown cognac leather and it's really heavy, thick leather, very well made. You can tell it's really made heavy um, and they're distressed, but they're supposed to be distressed. And then I open it up. Oh, free bird. Just sitting there in a bin. In that a bin that had been sitting out for at least an hour. So yeah, free bird, they're size six. So on the smaller side, and what will that sell for? One hundred and fifty. And so that's bins. And what are shoes the, the same price oh. as clothing? Yeah. So these probably weigh about four pounds. So they're maybe like five or six dollars yeah. or whatever. I, I do want to say when we were at um, on Friday when we were at the bins with Kristen, at one point she had found this really nice boot, but then there was a guy who found the other boot, and so she had. Don't so they did away. a what? Oh, go ahead. She's got it on her channel too. Okay, I'm just saying a boot. I mean, is I is that gonna have no, I spoiled no, her? No. Anyway, and so then she had to come get a coin because she needed to be able to do it to coin toss to decide who who would get the the boots. So um, she did lose. I, I missed alert. that. Where where the heck I was? Yeah, I, 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 let her, I let her borrow my. Um, do I have it in my pocket? I don't know. Your lucky your lucky coin. Uh, I let her borrow my coin that I got from the Stanley. Oh. So it's got the. Which apparently the, my dead girls were not lucky for her because she lost. But it was just kind of fun because she had to like toss a coin to figure out who got to have the, the, the full pair of boots. All right. So I'm on the last of the things. Okay. So one of the things I was talking Wait, about. Wait, hold on a second. Could you apologize first for how yeah, long it's taking? Yeah, sorry. Here? I apologize again. <laughs> <laughs> so on the, um, one of the things that we were talking about is like, we talk about like manifesting. I want to find this. I want to find that. I want to find this. Right. Mm -hmm. How often does it happen? Not very. Right. One of the things I had said, I wanted to find Filson this week. Found Filson. One of the other things I'd said, it was like, you know, you know what goes really well for vintage costumes? Vintage clown costumes. Vintage clown costumes that are like handmade and hand sewn off from like vintage fabrics. A lot of it would like feed sack fabrics, depending on how far back you go. And can I tell you, I didn't find not one, not two, three vintage clown costumes. Now I'm not going to get them uplisted before Christmas, whatever. They sell it year round. It doesn't matter. But what I did find, this was one of the first oh, ones. Oh, so cute. This is a kid's one. The other two were adults. But this, this so, again, bins. So it's not even a pound. So like, you know, 50 cents or something. But look at this fabric. How cute. This little vintage clown costume. Vintage Raggedy Ann fabric. Really cute. Love it. How much you going to sell that for? I mean, because it's kids, it won't sell for as much as the adult ones will. But I mean, probably at least 50. That's awesome. At least 50. Um... Another bins find, uh, something to keep an eye out for. Like I've sold Dale of Norway and different brands like that. This is not Dale of Norway, but this is a vintage, very, very thick knit ski cap in like this baby blue and white. A toque as our Canadian friends would call it. Yep. And this is brand is, I didn't even look it up, but it's whatever. It's wool and it's top notch knits, but whatever. This is vintage like 80s. And mm -hmm. that's at least 30 bucks. What did it cost me? 25 cents in the bins? This is one from Liz and I only wish that this was a little bit bigger because this is one of those kind of unicorn vintage 80s sweaters, literal unicorn vintage 80s sweaters. Raise your hand if you own this sweater. Right? I had one <laughs> I had one in pink. I know you're shocked. Look how cute this is. So cute. Little unicorns. Now this is a, a vintage medium, but it would fit a women's size small now. And this is like, again, this was bins. It's light because it's a lightweight acrylic made in, made in, uh, made in Taiwan ROC. So early eighties, as we would know by looking at it, although there's been a lot of this re repro mm -hmm. look of this stuff retro. So 75 bucks maybe. Uh, so it looks like we really do have to come back to um, Colorado because Kristen <gasps> Didn't even get any of our final challenge footage. And so let me tell you guys, it's okay. She did this whole challenge to see who found, we had one hour to find one item that sold for the most. What are you doing? Nothing. Why? You don't have your phone available, so now you're looking at mine? Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, you want mine? anyway, it was to see who could find the single item that would sell for the most using comps. And so because she didn't get that footage, you're not going to know, but I'll tell you right now, I won. I think I won. <laughs> 
Pretty sure I won. I think I won. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty close. I won. Actually, I think Liz, you did not win. Uh, I we all correct, won. Liz had nothing. No, I didn't have anything. I'll show one. Actually, the best thing we walked in the door and I went directly to one of the linen uh, bins and it had a dead stock or bright orange. Um, what do you call it? Ribbon waffle weave satin edge blanket. Satin edge blanket, like brand new, mm -hmm. which probably sells for like 75 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then like two seconds after that, Kristen's like, we're going to do a challenge, but that doesn't count. And I was like, I hate you. <laughs> okay. I'm on my last item. Okay. okay. <laughs> my last item. Now this was another thing that we had talked about. So Liz and I are walking up to the bins and I'm like, okay, I keep finding all this great vintage kids clothing, but kids clothing moves slowly, especially vintage. Right. So, but I can't resist it when it's really good and that sucks. So I'm terrible. Like ask Corey, we'll go to the bins. I pick something up. I'm like, oh, look how cute. Corey, I'll be like, put it down. Cause I'm a sucker for it, but it's really slow moving. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if she was like, well, what do you keep? I'm like, well, unless it's like these really good, this really good brand of like vintage, like pageant dresses and stuff that sell. What? Dun, 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 and Liz, dun, dun, dun. Is, Liz is standing. She's like, like this. Da, 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 literally da, da, pulls da, da. it out and hands it to me. You want this? So, some of you may know, this is a vintage pageant dress with a big, huge hoop inside and everything. But not only that, it's not just the pageant dress. There's one specific brand that sells the best, and this is it. And it is called Martha's Miniatures. Ooh. Uh, so... This is the tag, if I can find it. So Martha's Miniatures. If you find these dresses, don't pass them up because they usually go in auction and I'll probably sell it to somebody in China. Um, and every time I find these big, floofy, vintage kids' dresses, they're almost always going to China. And this, like somebody from Oregon is going to buy it using a forwarding service is what's going to happen. And this I'm going to sell for 300 bucks. Yeah. And I gave it to you. I'm just saying. You did. You did. This is officially a Liz find, but I'm going to sell it. Okay. So, however, one of the best things that you found, you actually gifted to Kristen. I don't know if she's going to show it on her channel or not. Yeah. I'm not going to give it away. She, she, she said she it earlier in there. The she, she said it. She said Kristen it, said it earlier. In she's like, don't forget about it. And she said So it I was. found because, because she loves it and it's like, it will fit her. And I know she's going to wear it. She's like, no, no, no. You can make money. Keep it. I'm like, no, it, it's it been fine. So it was vintage 1980s swatch watch brand cardigan in like all these color block pastel colors it's got it does have some like stain issues but i really think that if she, i think she can clean it thing. yeah no because it, it's not wool she can wash okay. it she can put like stain stick on i think it'll come clean it's super awesome it's really cool and and that probably there's not a lot of them there's not a lot of vintage swatch clothing in general i think i probably could have sold it for 100 to 125 dollars probably on etsy not ebay but it's a great sweater anyway yeah it yeah she's like it's really got to be 84 85 yeah it, agree 100 yeah. percent. so right. yeah that's what i love about shopping with a group we're like hey do you like this do you want it do you mm -hmm. and it was just a lot of fun even though i wasn't in the market to do a whole lot of shopping because if you know me, you know Liz keeps a death pile. <laughs> it's true. I have one now. Mine just grew. All right. Let's show some more stuff. So this is from my my um, private buy. I seriously got so much stuff. It's ridiculous. Um, here we go. This is obviously Max, Max Headroom. Coke t-shirt. Uh, this I got from the private buy. I prob this was probably like in the thirty dollar pile, but I mean, come on. So I'm not going to know a lot of the prices because it was kind of like he had everything stacked up and just kind of went through and priced everything. But I would say for this, so with that buy, I got close to like a hundred t-shirts and I paid seventeen fifty. Like it was, I laid down some money. I probably spent this week about three thousand, which is a lot. But I got 233 pieces. So what does that come out to? Let's do some. Let's do some maths here, guys. Um, let's say I think I spent about 3,000 divided by 233. So my average cost was 1287. Okay, mm -hmm. so 1287. Like that's really good, you know. So I definitely have ones that I paid up for. But you got to remember that my average sale price is like when I'm selling on regular, not whatnot, but on regular platforms, which I'm going to be doing with all of these shirts. My average sale price is like 70. Um, so 
going from basically $13 to $70 mm -hmm. average, it's really, really good. So, so our flights were free because we use our Southwest mm -hmm. miles because I use my Southwest card for everything all year long, uh, business and everything else. And uh, I paid for the hotel rooms and the stuff that's being shipped back is going to be my stuff. So even all in, I think I, I spent less than 3000 I would say I probably spent, including the hotel rooms and everything, maybe 2000 Yeah. And the thing is, it's like in particular with my the stuff that I'm buying, with how difficult, I mean, you can't, yes, I bought a couple, I bought a handful of vintage shirts from the bins and from thrift store. I got one really good one I'm going to show you that I did find at the thrift store, which is shocking. But otherwise, like if I wanted to find all this stuff, I'd have to spend every day at the bins, which is what these guys do every day at the bins. And it, it would take a lot of my time and time is worth money too. Mm -hmm. So for me being able to come here and honestly, like this was over four days, but if it was just me by myself and I went specifically to the places where I knew I could get the most stuff, being able to spend $12, $13 on average per piece and come home with 233 items in such a short period of time, I could have done it in one day. Um, if I was just doing it on my own, we weren't doing thrift stores. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's worth the time saved Yeah, because now I can go and Agreed. get it yeah. listed. Anyway, so I'm just basically that's just to say I don't remember exactly on all of these what I paid per item. And what Some do you think you're going to sell that max headroom for? I mean, I have to look it up. I don't know. There's probably a lot of them out there actually, but but who knows? But I'm hoping a hundred. But I could look it up and realize they all sell for thirty dollars because that's one of those ones where there's probably there might be a lot of them. But then I'll sell it on Etsy for a hundred dollars. So who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, this exactly. <laughs> Plus we had fun. Exactly. We did have fun. This uh, was one of the things I really liked about this guy, Alex, that we bought from is that, you know, he had, he had all the banger stuff. He had a bazillion shirts for me to look through, but he also had his own private collection, which was probably hundreds of T-shirts. Oh Those ones I didn't look through only because he would have sold them, but they because they were his personals that he loved, they would have been way too high price. So I didn't even want to tempt myself. But he has the same kind of quirky uh, eye that I have for some of the weird stuff and some of the things that he thinks are funny. That So this shirt is so stupid. It's so stupid. Cowhide. I mean, it's just dumb. It looks like it would be a far side shirt. And he it? he <laughs> loved that I picked this shirt because he said when he got it, he thought it was funny and the guys he was with thought it was stupid. So <laughs> cowhide. So this was probably like a $10 one. Mm -hmm. So where's my admins in the chat there? Can we like uh, block this dude that's coming in to ask weird questions before and like get him out? Yeah. Please. Um, uh, um, I got it. There we go. Wait, that's just hold on a second. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's okay. just, a, <clears throat> just annoying. It's a it's a normal question until you see where it's leading, and he's asked a lot of he's done it before. So just yeah, it's fake, okay. a fake account. So this came from the digging pit, mm -hmm. which was one of the shops that one of the first shops that we looked at. I only bought a few things because they were <coughs> they were definitely priced up. But I mean, come on, Allison, I think you'll appreciate this because you're a sick, sick son of a bitch. Uh, I can't see it very well. It says the best bush in Aurora comes in cans. <laughs> so just what like, kind of laugh <laughs> <is that>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. This is from, this is definitely an eighties t-shirt. I paid like 25 bucks for it. I'll, I'll definitely try to sell for like a hundred. It's dirty. It's naughty. Um, Oh, yeah, I, Patricia, <laughs> it's okay that you didn't know he was he was going somewhere. Really yeah, the way yeah, just he, the way he was asking. He's the been in the chats before. It's I don't know who it is. I yeah, think I just, don't think it's a real person. It's whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, okay, next up, this was from a private buy, and of course I had to get it because Teresa loves her Mountain Dew. Um, this is just a you know fun little snack tea. It this says, feels dead stock too. I, uh, I don't think it's dead stock, but it's in great condition. It's crispy, crispy. But I think it's a great, really big, like kind of mega graphic. Uh, this one, I, I probably was one of the $20 ones, around 20 bucks, 25. Um, really, the vast majority of stuff I got from this guy, he had priced very reasonably. Um, like this one, I think I paid like 30 for. I pay, I've had this exact same shirt on a t-shirt and sold it for over $100. Um, I think I'm being on a sweatshirt, makes it even cooler. Um, but is this uh, dynamic solar system? This particular one is from the Kitt Peak National Observatory. Um, this is one of those ones where you'll see other like different. Uh, what are you doing? I was reading the uh, copyright. You'll, you'll see it. you'll see different. Um, it's like this is the print, and then you'll see different locations on it. That yeah, makes sense. yeah, yeah. It's like a tourist made for tourist shops. Yeah, type but of it's thing. really really cool. Really cool sweatshirt. 
See, you said, I think I love this. You say really cool about every item too. So there you go. Because it is really cool. They're all really cool. I love them so much. <laughs> uh -huh. Such a dork. <laughs> this is like day five of this. <laughs> Everything is super cool. Oh my God. Oh my God. So cool. Uh, I think this was like one of the $8 ones. Seriously, guys. This one, take a bite out of crime. Look at it. <laughs> like this one, I should be able to sell for like 70 Hey, what's hey, up, Steve? Steve? What's up, our buddy Steve? Steve so Reagan, who we have uh, re happened to be in Vegas the same week as the remix, but wasn't able to attend the remix because um, <laughs> someone how got is a little still, bit... How is it still killing you? Someone got a little bit messy on Freeman. I'm just no, kidding. You were messy. Not, you were not, not messy. He did not. Um, but he was so funny. So I think we have sufficiently convinced him slash guilted him into coming and speaking <laughs> next year. We just waited until he had some drinks and then we were like, hey, sign this paper, this contract to come <laughs> next year. No, we've been we've been asking and wanting Steve since year one, and yes. uh, it, he, we think he would be a great addition to the remix next year. Uh, we need a an Amazon Pro to come and talk to us and teach us. A lot of us are afraid of Amazon, yeah. And Steve is like the best. Well, and he's got a course right, right now that, that he's been working on. It's all about sourcing on eBay to sell on Amazon. And I love that because one of the things that we hear about from people is like, well, you know, because like today we're, we're in Colorado, we're talking about how amazing the thrifting, the amazing and the sourcing is. By but, the way, I just want to say, Steve, we were in Estes Park same day as you. You posted yes. a picture with your family. <laughs> we missed you by a couple of hours. Seriously. Anyway, so we're talking about how great the sourcing is here. But one of the things we hear from people is like how tough it is for them to source where they live. And I think like what he's been doing sourcing on eBay, like this is like sourcing from your home. It doesn't matter where you live in the U S sourcing from eBay to sell on Amazon and he's killing it. So I'm excited to have uh, yeah. Steve come next yes. year. Yes. Steve is the book guy. Yeah, yeah. Among other things, but honestly he's t taught and, and created so many courses and books and things like that. So if you're not following, and I know that we all have a different uh, you know, audience, if you're not following Steve, on uh, on on YouTube and on Facebook, you absolutely should. I mean, and if you're somebody that wants to learn how to source OA to make it easier, have it come to your door and sell it on mm -hmm. uh, uh, elsewhere, his courses. I'm going to 100% uh, recommend that Steve is one of the good guys with great information. Yeah and great knowledge to share. And if you do want to invest, we don't sell courses, you know that. Uh, if you want to invest in yourself, in your business and learn something new, I highly recommend taking yeah. one of his courses. And I would not say that for just anybody. Listen, here's the I thing. I really wouldn't. I really feel like now that we're finally telling people to go follow Steve, he, he's really gonna blow up. So, yes, yes. Time. Our, I mean, our... he's, he's been kind of underground, <laughs> but now, I mean, Steve, I'm, I, you're welcome. Uh, you're, I, I think you're going to see him in, in the next couple of days. You're finally going to make it. Uh, yeah, it's totally going to be do Just so you mm -hmm. know, when you blow up next week, it's all because of this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're having lots of fun here in Colorado. So, okay, let's get back to t-shirts. Uh, I was super excited about this because I do love, I'm a comic book nerd, but I'm not like a big, the big two aren't really my thing, like Marvel and, um, and DC. I like a lot of the more, uh, like graphic novels and things like that. So I don't know if anyone here is a fan of Lone Wolf and Cub, but how rad is this shirt from Dark Horse Comics? Um, I honestly don't, I have no idea how much I paid for this because it was one of the ones that was just in the stacks that he added up. So, um, but I don't think it was very much. I think at most it was in a $40 pile, um, but just a really cool graphic novel. I mean, I have this, this uh, book at home, so I was very excited to see this. It was just, you know, that makes sense. Um, here's one. This was like in the $8. She's got about 10 more. She's got about 10 more guys. Hang in. I will not apologize. Okay. That is Vicky's issue to feel guilty. Like, oh, I'm sorry. We're giving you too much haul in our haul video. I am so sorry that I'm showing you cool stuff. My apologies. <laughs> well, you She's dropped so one viewer. So I know it's true. I don't care. It was probably Steve. He, he oh. was like, I'm on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was definitely one of the eight dollar piles. I think it's awesome because it's it's this is a uh, this is a sorority t shirt. I'm assuming it says Delta Zeta, uh, but look how cool it is. It's got a nagel print on it. I love it. It's so it's so eighties. Love it. Bright hot pink. But yeah, this was an eight dollar t. Uh, this is one we so we we went through all the stuff in his garage, and then he's like, I've got more stuff in the basement if you want to come check it out. And we yeah, were, we're going to we follow the creepy guy in the basement. Sure. We were not? a little scared at first. Just kidding. And no, I, he was really nice. 
And as we were kind of walking through this one room, I, this t-shirt was sitting by itself and I saw it and I was like, oh, and I grabbed it. And then when he was putting stuff in the piles, I think this might've been in an $8 pile. And I was like, seriously? I just like it. Smoke busters. Okay. This is the kind of stuff I love. And again, this is why I love this guy, Alex, because he definitely grabs the weird stuff that I like. Smoke busters. And then on the back it says, I ain't afraid of no smoke. It's Helena National Forest, Townsend District. But like mm. how, I love it. I love it. I love it. Just Patty, so Patty, Patty says D would love that. I'm going to tell you the Nagel shirt, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll talk. We got to get, get that, get that Nagel shirt out. <laughs> uh, okay. Next up. And then this is one that, um, this one still has a tag. I want to get this off. This is, again, the weird stuff that I like. This is 1982. Look at this. Brace yourself for the future. It's like a space braces t-shirt. Like just, just weird stuff. This that might you get from like your, a, your orthodontist would give you a t-shirt to wear home from getting yeah, your and, braces. And I think this might've been an $8 one as well. Like it's crazy. And even like he had like his, his tag on this one from when he probably had like a pop-up and it's like 25 bucks on it. So I think this was one of the $8 ones. So even $25, I would have paid $25 for this one to be honest. Cause it's so ridiculous now mind you like this is just a scratch into what we got this week we we took us a while to try and pick some of our favorites yeah. but it's this has been crazy crazy good sourcing here um i love this one idaho spud powered spud powered look how cute this is i thought it was pickles, oh. pickles. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know idaho pickles. idaho pickles <laughs> anyway but this one i think was was more like 15 dollars <laughs> probably um, but just a really fun 80s tea. Uh, then, this is great because it's Colorado. Uh, I, I've i bought two different Alfred Packer um, t-shirts. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the dude who like basically led uh, people on an expedition to like travel across the U.S. and like pretty much ate everybody. It's, it's a little cannibal-y. Anyway, this says Alfred Packer, Packer ate here. Um, you got foot longs. Finger steaks, rump roast, barbecue ribs, Democrats al dente. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's single stitch. And then the back it says mom's cafe. So I thought that was pretty funny. So that was one of them. There's like another Alpha Packer one that I got. But <clears throat> if you've seen Cannibal the Musical, then you know all about them. Uh, this is actually a boo. Who has seen Cannibal the Musical? Uh, the Cannibal Core. Cannibal Core. <laughs> Campbell the Musical. It's 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 the guys who did South Park. It's um, Trey Trey Parker and Matt Stone. It's a one of the very one of the very first movies they did. It's really fun. The music's actually pretty good, um, but it is that's an Alpha Packer. Anyway, th so this is actually a boot a bootleg shirt. So Allison, uh, not, yeah, Allison, seriously, check it out. Check it out. I thought you would like this. Uh, so Naomi asked, is there a tag? I'm not sure which item you're oh, asking. I think she's watching a different, uh, about, yeah. it's about a Pendleton. Oh, okay. So I think she's earlier in the back, show. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is a really cool, so this is not like an officially licensed, um, you wouldn't see this on a regular t-shirt, but I think it's, the graphic is fantastic. I might've paid like 40 for this one. This might've been one of the ones I paid up a little bit for. Um, okay. Speaking of thrift stores here, this is probably the best vintage t-shirt I found in an actual thrift store. And the pink was not half off, right? No, that was regular. You paid up for that. I paid up for this, price. guys. Well, actually, Vicky paid for this. Um, I paid $3.99 for this one, guys. A whole $3.99. This is a 1995, 1995 Ringer T Bewitched. Also feels dead stock. Probably dead stock. Uh, there's a couple that are listed. One's listed for like a hundred was 140, mm -hmm. and then there was another one for 120. I don't think this is going to go for that much. I can, pro I think I can probably get like 80 to 100 for this though. Um, just a cute bewitched T-shirt. But I was excited because I found a, a honest to goodness real vintage T-shirt in a thrift store. I asked her if I could have it, and she before I could finish my sentence, I said no, nope. Um, not happening. No, <laughs> here's, here's one that I paid up for it at, uh, one of the vintage shops, but I just love the graphic. This is, well, this says electro vac sucks. And then the other side, it's the surgical house Valley lab. I don't even know what's happening in this, 
but I love it. I think it's I fantastic. Think it's, it's, the, it's the sucker for when you're like, they're, they're you know, you're your mouth dentist and, or the yeah, surgery yeah, yeah. and they're like uh, sucking all the yeah. goop out of your mouth. Yep. So I love it. Okay. One of my favorite things though, we went to the ARC thrift store and I think it was the same one where I got the bewitched one. Mm -hmm. And I saw this kid who's maybe 12. I don't even know if he was 12. Maybe. Between a 10 and 10 and 12 years old, wearing this sweatshirt, absolutely filthy, by the way. It's really dirty. It needs Can you to not be, put that next to my face then? I, I won't keep your face away from it then. Uh, but it's an awesome sweatshirt and I wanted it. And I've never done the whole off the back thing where you go and offer somebody money for something that they're wearing. And I thought it'd be fun. And so I offered this kid 40 bucks for the sweatshirt he was wearing. And thankfully he was with an adult, so it didn't come across too Well, creepy. he was with his brother who was also he wasn't, a kid. He wasn't totally older. creepy. Hey, kid, can I take your shirt off and I'll give you $40? That's not yeah, creepy that's, at all. No. Anyway, so it's a 90s kind of all over print Taz football sweatshirt. And um, so I, I offered him 40 bucks. Honestly, 40 was probably a little high, but it was my first off the back and I wanted to. <laughs> Danny, so she targets a kid for her first. Seriously. <laughs> She was, so I, I didn't have any is, cash. And I was like, homeless guy. I didn't have any, I didn't have any cash. So I was getting Vicky and she gave me $30. She's like, that's enough. And I'm like, no, I want to give him like a significant amount. Cause 40 is honestly what I probably would have paid for this in a store, like a, a vintage shop. There's one listed that's dead stock with tags for $120. So honestly, this, I might be able to sell for 80. Like I think 40 is a fair price. He said he got it for 40 or his parents bought it for him for 40. So it's not like he didn't know that vintage is worth money. It's not, I wasn't taking advantage. And he actually had to text his parents to ask if he could sell it because he really wanted to. Because he was As like, Liz and I are in the parking lot going, God, I hope nobody's sick security on Katie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> he wasn't a big kid. It was like hanging on him. And he had a t-shirt underneath. So I knew it would be, I knew like it, he wasn't going to like not have a shirt to wear, but it is literally, it is so filthy. It's, got it's so dirty. It. It's so dirty. I mean, I'm going to have to do some serious work on it, but it was just fun to do. Like, that. I don't think the kid ever washed it. So no, probably <laughs> not. Probably not. Hi mom. Can I take my shirt off and sell it to a stranger? Exactly. Uh, she's like, is this weird? I'm like, only if you say, I'll give you $40 to take your shirt off and walk out of the store. Anyway. Uh, so I don't, Vicky hasn't seen it. I showed this to Liz, but Vicky hasn't seen it. Yes. I love this shirt. Look at this. <laughs> Same as a people. Smart as a people. Smart as a people. Smart as a people. You know, like smart as a, smart as a fox. Smart as a people. That's Apparently, Kristen and Allison have the same thought process there. Only worse <laughs> if you rolled up in a white van on him. And Kristen's like, it's not like she offered him candy in a van. <laughs> no, they didn't give him candy. Just cash. Cold hard cash. Anyway, smart as a people. I think I love this one. It's a nice big size too for a for a vintage t-shirt. This one I did pay twenty dollars for. Um, this came from one of those uh, the house vintage shops. Um, this one I, I'm, I'm going to show you guys because I want to see if anybody out there knows what this is. I haven't Googled it or anything, but it's Galactica. It's some sort of, it's from 1989. I don't know if it's some sort of military space thing here in Colorado, uh, but if there's anyone out there, obviously there's like Battlestar Galactica. I think that's where the Galactica comes from, but just a cool t-shirt. Um, They're all cool. Have, just a cool. You shut your mouth. <laughs> you shut your mouth right now. All right, uh, one more one more ski t-shirt. This is my favorite of all the ski t-shirts I got. You guys know how I feel about cow shirts because if you like cows and you know how I feel about ski t-shirts, but what happens when you mash those together, you get ski Colorado. Ski Cal, you like that one? Ski Cal, ski Cal, Ooh, Cal Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> ski Colorado. <laughs> Cracking herself up here. It's, it's hilarious. Pretty, it's pretty funny. Okay, I'm down to my last few. Now I'm going to talk about the stuff that I did really pay up for. First of all, this shirt right here. So here in Colorado Springs, there is a shop called Leech. It's called the Leech Pit. The Leech Pit. The Leech Pit. It's a record store, vintage shop. It's got like some really cool stuff. Let me tell you, super expensive. Very, very expensive. They had a ton of vintage t-shirts. The majority of the vintage t-shirts were just okay. Like I'll pay up if I really, really like the print on it. They were all too expensive. It was like $30 a dot. So I didn't get anything from their regular t-shirts. But then they had this section kind of in the back that was roped off. And you had to ask to go back there. And because I saw this basket case two t-shirt hanging up. And I'm like, I had seen some really cool Ocean Pacific t-shirts. So they had priced at like $150. I'm like, really? Come on. So I was sure it was going to be like, they were going to have a price of like $400 or at least like $250. It's going to be way too expensive. I'm like, I got to go check it out. $89.99. 90 bucks, which and that's a personal, that's a personal, I might list it. I could think I could sell it for at least 200, 
but 90 bucks, really, really good price for it. And I think it's dead stock too. Vicky was like, you're going to put on a dirty vintage shop t-shirt. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, uh, it was clean anyway. So $90 for this shirt. Um, and then there were two other ones that I grabbed from in there as well. These each were priced at 65. Um, so this is Adam Ant 1985 tour in great condition. Really, really cool shirt. There's none of these ones listed this particular one. Um, I think I could sell this for probably 150 to 200 bucks. So 65 great price. Um, it was just like their basic mids were like way too expensive. Um, especially given all the deals you've gotten. True. And so, and then this last one, another, this was also $65, uh, Suzanne Summers as Chrissy from three's company. Um, and just, I mean, come on, especially cause we're doing the Roper romp. I couldn't pass it up. This is 65, just an iron on tee, but really, really fun. I had the cute. Farrah Fawcett tee like that before. Yeah. Iron on the classic Farrah Fawcett in the red bathing suit. Love it. Love it. And so when we, when I bought, did my big private buy from Alex, so he, he added up, I had a couple of t-shirts that were priced quite a bit higher. And one of them he wanted, he, so the first one, this one he wanted $200 for. So this is no effects, um, fat records, white trash, two heaps of bean um, t-shirt. One of Katie's favorite bands. Yeah. One of my favorite bands. It's just too big. Great, she would have kept great it. Great album. He wanted 200 for that. Then uh, this Olivia um, pinup. Uh, this is one of Vicky's favorite artists. Mm -hmm. Um, and he wanted 150 for this one, I believe. So Olivia is famous for doing the, she did the whole Betty Page revival. So all of the artwork with Betty Page and like the beautiful, uh, she kind of like brought back Betty Page yeah. into the mainstream and into the pinup world in the last two decades or so. Yeah. But this is so, an early one. So this he wanted 150, he wanted 150 for this one. He wanted 200 for the no effects. And then he wanted 200 for this Disney villains tee which is let I me mean, this is just a fantastic shirt okay so i'm like let's put those aside and get tell me what how much you want for all the other ones so he we went through and like i said they were like 40 some for eight dollars a piece then like all these other price points and i think he was surprised when i said i will take all of them and so then once i was like okay i'll take all of those he then he looked at these other ones and he ended up giving me i think i paid like maybe eight dollars a piece for the other three mm -hmm. so again 200 i paid 80 200, I paid 80. 150, I think I paid around, I think it came out to around 80. So, and what can you sell those for? I mean, I can sell, this is definitely a $200 shirt. Mm -hmm. So I paid 80, I'll get 200 for that. Um, I'm assuming I should be able to get a couple hundred for this one as well. And I don't really know about this one, but uh, 100, 100. I figure, and this is on the fashion victim tag, which if anyone knows about the fashion victim, um, they get some pretty good prices. So I think I can get a couple hundred for So I see. Uh Scott, the Cha-Ching King, popping hey, into our chat. Hey, what's happening? It's nice to see you in here. Uh, we don't know Scott, mm -hmm. but but I uh, we all follow him on uh, yeah. Instagram and stuff like that. And uh, if you're not following Scott, or if you I know he has a YouTube channel now as well, uh, fairly recently. But if you have not followed him, at least on Instagram, his stuff is so good. Yeah, so sure. good. Such good finds and bolos mm -hmm. and very kind and friendly and yeah. loves to share that stuff. So uh, he's got some great stuff. And that was how I first noticed um, the finds and the bolos. So, yep. Um, yeah. So hello. Um, and then I, oh, I have two more things to show. This is one that, um, that Liz actually found. And as soon as I saw it, sometimes I'll pay up for something just because it's like it's got a place in my heart and I can't say no. And so this is kind of one of those. Uh, because I probably won't make a whole lot of money on this, but Eddie and the Cruisers, Eddie and the Cruisers, this is from 19... With, like, the muscle shirt. It's cut the off. muscle, not cut off. Like Eddie, well, no, it's supposed to look like that. Sleeveless. Uh, so this is from 1983, Eddie and the Cruisers. It's actually a really good size. It's XL, but it probably measures more like a medium large. Large. I paid 60 for this, so definitely paid up. Um, I'm hoping I can sell it for 100 but I don't know. There's, like, one other one that's priced too low. Um, but it's a smaller size and not in as good a condition. So I, I couldn't say no to it. And then the last thing I found this. Very last. In case you're waiting for the last. <laughs> Stop apologizing. Okay. <laughs> you won't keep that up. I have some cool stuff to show. And I want to show it. True. And they we all had it. some cool stuff. Today. And if you don't like it, you can leave, which is clearly what happens based on the views we get on these videos. Um, <laughs> anyway, Cha-Ching King, $10. Oh, he's paying us because he was tardy. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Thank you. So the last thing I got to show, I found this. Uh, so there, there's this really cool place. What was it called? It was a the garage sale. So mm. it's called, this place is awesome. Okay. Prices for the most part were a little high. Okay. However, what was really, really cool about it is it was downtown Denver, right? Larimer and 15. It's called the garage sale. You go in and it's a bunch of different vendors. So there's just you know, racks everywhere from different sellers and it's downstairs and upstairs, but it's a bar. And it's open until 11 o'clock at night because it's also a bar. It's a bar. A bar. You sp if you spend a hundred dollars or more, you get a free shot. Okay. I did not get to take the shots. I didn't need a shot, but you get a shot. Um, and so I bought like a couple of things that were a little bit higher priced than I would have liked. But then, but then guys, I saw something hanging on the wall. I'm like, what's that? I got very excited. And then I looked at the price tag and it said $50. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? It's only $50. And I started, I grabbed the money out of my pocket and started throwing it at them. And I'm like, take my money, you bastards. <laughs> because this is what it was. Guys, it's a freaking showgirl shirt. It says the show is about to begin. And on the back, it says showgirls. This is from the greatest movie of all time. Okay, sorry. The greatest comedy ever filmed as a drama of all time from 1995. The ever amazing, ridiculous movie, Showgirls. And you guys, if you know me, you know I love Showgirls. I was going to say, if you've watched our channel for any significant period of time, or if you happen to know Katie, you will know that that is her all-time favorite movie. It's not my all-time favorite movie. It's real damn close. But it's it's so stupid. It's so ridiculous. It's so awful. It's so high budget. It makes no freaking sense. It's so bad. It's so bad and it, 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 I love it so much. So uh, anyway, $50. And what's crazy is that I looked it up. You don't There's, know me. There are none listed anywhere. There's no solds anywhere. The only one I was able to find was a Twitter post, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think it's like worth a bazillion dollars. I'm, but I'm sure I could get 100 to 200 for it. It was 50 bucks and it fits me. It's a what? personal. She's not going to sell this. What? Definitely a personal. Yeah. So yeah, with it's it's the, it's got no me. I mean, listen, my my AOL instant messenger name, my AIM name, was Nomi came alone, bitches. Okay. Because <laughs> her name is Nomi Malone. My name is Katie. Nomi, and yes, yeah, Scott. Nomi with Elizabeth came alone. Berkeley, yes, the worst movie ever. But yes, she loves it. There's a whole cult following around it. Um, At it's, one it's point, ridiculous. I transcribed the entire movie because I wanted the script and I couldn't find it online. You tra okay? you trans. Oh my god! I transcribed it and I posted Just it like, pause, on pause. Right, right, I right. I posted pause, it. Right, right, right. I posted it because remember how on MySpace you could have a blog. Mm -hmm. I, I, had I never the had showgirls. I had the showgirls blog on MySpace. It was me transcribing the movie Showgirls. Chill, okay. <laughs> And that was the first day. <laughs> so that kind of set the tone. Oh, yeah. I already wore, I wore this on uh, mm -hmm. Friday. But yeah, Showgirls. Love me some Showgirls. So Showgirls, basket case too. I mean, come on. It was, it's was. it been a good time. Yeah, there isn't one I'm worth Yeah, I looked on one point. Like, yeah. I couldn't find one anywhere. So it's not a crazy shirt. It's just, but you know, there's the... <laughs> Cheryl, Vicky, it's not too late. <laughs> I can still check out. We are getting married December 17th. So, uh, I mean, we've only been engaged for almost five years. We're getting married December 17th, less than two months away. Cause you know, we haven't done a darn thing for the wedding yet, but oh my God. Anyway, guys, with that, with that said, I think we had a pretty good, a pretty good time in Colorado. What do you think? We're coming back. Colorado. You have not seen the last of us for yeah. sure. Uh, I already wore the Showgirls t-shirt on Friday. If it's She's not perfectly. wearing it for our wedding, oh. Cheryl. No. Well, I might. I could wear it under my suit. You won't even know. I'll blame you, Cheryl. <laughs> I will blame you. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I feel like, and the personal is like, how awesome that the basket case t-shirt is exactly my size. Mm -hmm. And the Showgirls t-shirt, exactly my size. Colorado loves me. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so glad. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and sticking through this for like an hour and 40 minutes. And it was just a haul, an hour and 40 minute haul. And honestly, this is just the tip of the stuff that we got. It's been an insane sourcing week mm -hmm. with literal four to 500 pounds of stuff that we've purchased. And everything is great. So I'm like, yeah, so psyched. Seriously. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
I love you, Laura. We'll definitely come to Michigan at some point, but this is closer. I don't know if we're ever going to Michigan. We may again. not ever come to Michigan now. It's so this is closer. Sorry. Guys, <sighs> gotta, gotta come back to Colorado. Uh, yeah, it's been a long show, but thank you for watching and hanging in. Scott, thanks for popping in. Uh, Steve Rakin, he's probably for gone sure. by now, but thanks for popping in, uh, Steve. And yeah, we'll see you with a normal show next Sunday, I guess. What's wrong with this show? Nothing. Quit apologizing. We can't do Quit it. Quit apologizing. We can't do an hour and a half haul every Quit week. Apologize for apologizing right now. Do it. Thanks Apolog for popping in, apologize Scott. Apologize for apologizing. I apologize for apologizing. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>